fellow members, guests. Since I was a child, I always been touched by the injustice in the world. I had a very happy childhood. Why couldn't others have a good one too? Why are there rich and poor people, oppressors and oppressed? Why are there still one billion people suffering from hunger in our planet? All those questions kept lingering in my head and started, and started to define my quest for a united and meaningful life. The tipping point was a one month trip to Ivory Coast to help children of the street living in shelters and prison. I was just 18 and it was a life-changing experience. I met a teenager there that was the same age as me, but that had a very different fate. They had lost their family, were caught alone at night wandering in the streets of the capital, Abidjan, and sent to jail as a preventive action, rather than for any crime. I realized it could be me had I been born in a different country. So I decided I would do all I could to share the love I was given with, who, uh, with, with those who didn't have any hope left. And this impacted my professional and artistic life, as well as my spiritual life. There in Africa, I've seen pictures of white Jesus in those African churches, and I was shocked. I started looking for something closer to the original message I read in the Bible, and I shifted from Catholicism to Rastafari. When they hear Rastafari, most people think of pots and dreadlocks. <laughs> but Rastafari is actually a way of life that promotes a healthy and simple living. It is also the road for redemption for both the black and the white people after four centuries of slavery, colonialism, and forced labor. It took me some time, but now I am more in line with these principles. On the professional side, it wa I was thinking of becoming an IT engineer, since I liked programming. But while computers are useful, they are not essential to the poorest. So I went instead for a water engineering degree and a master in tropical agriculture development. I spent the last seven years working with rural communities in West Africa, in India, in the, the islands of the Indian Ocean, and in uh, the poorest province of, of China. Um, I was helping uh, poor, poor people to fulfill their, uh, their basic needs. In West Africa, I also discovered the rich culture of percussion and dance associated with the social life of the village. This tradition is disappearing because of the Western influence. So I wanted to learn percussion for myself and to become an ambassador of the African culture, making people dance with African vibration. I have learned with some masters in Africa and back in France, I started a band. It was quite popular there. But when I moved to China, it was a brand new sound for them. Nevertheless, I gathered some African, Chinese, and Westerners, and we started rehearsing. We actually became quite popular in the end and had the opportunity to, do, to perform in major festivals and, and events. More recently, I became involved with climate change. In China, we were helping rural families to reduce their carbon footprints by providing energy from animal waste. To promote our project, I went to the International Climate Change Conference in Durban and in Copenhagen. There, I realized that acting in the field was not always enough and that it was worth fighting in other arenas too. I became more aware of the value of activism and advocacy to convince people. So this summer, I joined the Climate Reality Project. And I am now accredited 
to deliver presentation on the impact of climate change on, on, and on the solutions we can implement. That is why I am here today. I want to improve my public speaking skills in order to convince, inspire, and call for action on this issue that will affect us all. Thank you for your attention.